You got sweaty balls today. Sorry about that, guys. I, I just went on a jog. But here's what we're going to do. You want to see my stash? Bog. So everybody say what's up to Bog. Best fishing part. You want to go fishing? I need to. Let's hustle this up. All right. So let's see if I can do this one. Drop and There we go. And I still drop some. By the way, Ryan Salzman, if you are watching this, I have your Vision 110. <laughs> I'm not giving it back. So, deal. All right. So I got my little gamble stash right here. Get some reaction in there, too. Here's what we're gonna do. I got a really cool video planned for you. I hope it works. Um, you guys have been really interested in like techniques and stuff like that, especially on some of these Florida lakes because they're the, the first that kind of get into that pre-spawn staging as well as spring and spawn mode. Um, I got a cool technique that actually works kind of pre-spawn outside of Florida, but it definitely was something that was coined, tweaked, and and really kind of made popular and famous in Florida. And I gotta grab some baits on my gambler stash, stuff like, I'm gonna need some burner worms. Uh, any easies in here? Yeah, like a big easy, basically big bulky plastic. So big easy, um, burner worms, kind of like a, a little kicking worm, like a swimming worm. What we're gonna do is we're gonna target some um, some staging and some pre-spawn fish. Me and Volgren are gonna go out there and get super shallow and get into the grass and uh, see there should be some fish moving onto beds, but it's kind of a cool way to fish really shallow through heavy cover and trigger some insane bites because you fish pretty fast. It's a power fishing mode, but come along with me. I think you guys are gonna enjoy this video. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. If you don't do it for sweaty balls, do it for my boy, ball. What up, ball? Such a good boy. And if you guys haven't tuned in and seen some of the cool videos we've been posting, we dropped a 13. There's some good uh, fishing tip videos on crankbaits, on uh, red trailers for chatterbaits, all kinds of fun stuff. So if you guys enjoy real like fishing content, things that teach you something or something that you can take away from that's not all hype and clickbait, a little bit of clickbait, but not too much. Uh, go back and watch some of the videos. But we are gonna get out on the water, come along with me. Let's do this. what I got rigged up because it's basically one thing to kind of do this technique but I always have like a follow-up deal because basically what we're doing is we're power fishing through grass so what I got set up excuse me book well, you gotta get we gotta show them I got a big easy um that's just a belly weighted screw in hook and we're actually going to talk about the different hooks that you can use and why you would use say a Texas rig versus a belly weight as we get into it but I just got here I want to fish so the other things I got though is a Texas rig fat ace on fluorocarbon 20 pound and then another Texas rig fat ace on 40 pound braid. Both of those have hog tech little bullet weights. Wow, I almost fell down, that was hot. And they're like a quarter ounce or three sixteenths. So the trick being is the following. We are going to fish this grass right here. And we're gonna hope that there's fish spawning and in little holes and kind of, in, 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 you'll see there's little patches. We'll focus on it. We're gonna buzz this bait over the grass to get a reaction strike or to locate the fish. And then if we can't get them to close the deal on say like an easy, a burner worm, some kind of like top water, like moving bait, um, then we're gonna take that little stick bait and fire back in there and try to get them to go. So let's see if this works out. You can get some amazing strikes doing this, like insane. A lot of times they won't actually get the bait and like close the deal, but uh, yeah, it, it's fun. One. <laughs> no one just missed it. And three bites in one cast. That was kind of nuts. Got him that time. <laughs> I don't know if he's coming out. Just the little guys. This is a little buck, but you kind of get the idea. You know, you you slang it out there. And they uh, they come up and they they crush it. Thank you. Oh no. Shoot, I ride my 
real. Come out of there. Oh no, I fried my reel. We're wrapped around the corner. <laughs> oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. We're gonna have to hand line this one in, guys. <laughs> oh, come here, come here, come here. <laughs> and that right there is what's awesome. But I got my line, my line tacked around my, my reel tip. Oh, my rod tip. That was cool. This is such a fun way to fish. It's such a like a power way to fish. This isn't a giant, it's probably like three and a half, four pounds, but we're gonna get her released. But I don't think rats do it. They're so, when they get up here, they are so like crazy active. Dude, let's get her back. I see you later, honey. But that fish was just in like a little hole right up in front of us. And we buzzed that big easy over it. And actually she blew up once, we missed her. And then we threw it back and it's really a power retrieve. You know, you're buzzing it through, buzzing it through. What happened was is she knocked so much slack in the line, it wrapped around my rod tip and, and I couldn't reel my reel. I had to hand line it in. That's crazy. Let, let's get some more. I'm going to show you kind of like the baits that we use as we move forward. But dude, just targeting these holes and buzzing that bait, you miss a ton of fish, a ton of fish. Like you'll, you'll kind of get frustrated. Like they'll blow it out of the water. You'll miss them. You'll throw back. You'll miss them again. But dude, when they close the deal, it is such a fun bite. So what am I doing when I'm doing this? So I'll make a cast. I try to make a little longer cast, but it does get a little dangerous. The biggest thing you gotta figure out is how fast they want it. Like sometimes in clear water, they want it fast and stop. Fast and, oh my God, dude. Did, did you see that? So they want it fast and then stop. Sometimes if the water gets a little bit of color into it, we're gonna throw back to that fish. Uh, you want to basically kind of give it maybe like a slow, steady retrieve. Let's try this on this one. Slow, steady retrieve. The little guy got it, but we don't, we don't want to catch the little guy. We'll shake him off, dude. So you got to play with your retrieve because cadence, it's almost kind of like jerk bait fishing, but like super hardcore. You got to play with your cadence and how fast you're moving the bait. But them big ones, and like I said, with like a with like a belly weighted hook, you can kind of stop it, and it'll just oh my god, he's right there, he's right there, dude. <laughs> it's, it's the craziest vision. But you'll stop, and the bait will kind of wallow down, and they'll they'll absolutely crush it. But play with your cadence, make a long cast, especially if the water's clear, and try to target like holes, like these little pockets that are in here, and fish are in there bedding or they're circling around the bed. Oh, the little guy. He crushed it though. He took my bait, bro. Peeing. They are spawning. Bug, you just drank that fish's pee. Bug loves these topwater fish. Loves them. It's another male right there. Yes, Bog, you're so excited. Come on, little guy. Let him go. Power pull down real quick. I'm going to do something I don't usually get to do. Oh, there he is. Okay, so this is what's kind of cool. And these are some of the signals that you can use. I know you guys probably can't see me pointing at it, but I'm going to put the camera underwater right below us, right there. Actually, you can kind of see it. There's a bed. There's another bed right there. There's a two pounder just swimming around back and forth right here. But that's when you're looking for signals. Oh, there's another bed right there. Oh, oh, dude, there's like a two and a half right there. Just swimming. But you're looking for signals and looking for those, you know, those hard spots or those light spots down on the bottom. And that's an indicator, even if they're not on the beds, it's an indicator that they're around because they've swept off those beds. Now, the big trick here, um, it's an especially a Florida thing because these fish come in so quick. If you're catching a lot of little guys, you probably want to back off. You see there's a grass line out there. Probably want to back off to the edge or, or get a little bit deeper because those females are backed off. But if you're catching, you know, some little guys and then you catch a four, kind of like today, you know, we like caught some little guys, caught a little bigger one, caught some little guys, caught a little bigger one. So if that happens, that means they're kind of coming, dude. So you might want to hang out super skinny and then by like two o'clock, three o'clock in the afternoon, all of a sudden it's game on and you absolutely smash them, which is exactly what I'm hoping for today but such a fun way to fish. Like there's nothing like it. 
uh, you know, a, a spook or something like that is a lot of fun. They come up and they crush it. But, dude, in this heavy cover, I mean, literally, you could walk across this stuff. It's so thick. It's all strandy. And they just go kersploosh. And you go, ah! And then, if you get lucky, you land them. <laughs> so cool. Okay. Oh, there we go. Oh no. I'm gonna put a different reel on. This thing's fried. <laughs> that is the coolest bite, dude. That is the coolest bite. That's only like a three and a half, four pounder. But dude, you cannot tell me that that is not the coolest bite. That fish bit it three times and freaking crushed it at the end. That was awesome. So in my opinion, the biggest mistake guys make throwing like a big easy, an easy swimmer, just like a top water soft plastic is the following. So they will slang it out there, get all this heavy cover and they will point the rod up like this and they will reel. So I think there's two things wrong with that. One, it makes the bait kind of skate over the top of the grass. Um, the whole trick with this is to have that tail like dragging so it, it goes blub, 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 blub. You almost want it barely below the surface, just like, like a half inch below the surface. And I think it scrapes the bait across the top instead of letting it swim through sort of the very top of that water column. The other thing is too, is when you have your rod that high, you get blown up and you drop back to the fish. Well, this braid, like it's 50 pound braid, it's super light and it floats you have all this slack line just flying around for a second and it gets wrapped around all this gunk whether you're fishing wood whether you're fishing grass flats like this and you end up not getting a good connection with the fish when you set the hook because there's there's rod that might be like pulled like a few inches to the right the left or whatever so here's what i do and i've been pretty successful with this i'll cast it out now note you are going to lose fish and miss fish doing this technique no matter what you do i don't care how perfect you are but what I do is I point the rod at the bait, uh, maybe right at the bait or just a hair above like this, and I'll reel. And what happens is that, <laughs> and then what happens is, is you catch a fish right where you threw it, where it was straight up in the air. So yeah, so the tail gets a little more drag and it bubbles. Well, I'm talking about proof of concept, right? So the tail drags a little bit more and bubbles. And then the other thing that happens is you're already sort of lined up to set the hook. I kind of I tried not to hit the camera because I'm trying to talk to you guys so I didn't set the hook right but the fish will blow up and even if you're pointed at them and the line's semi-taut you still have a little bit of space in that line for them to swim off with it and you don't want them to swim that far but the trick is that line is semi-taut so it's not you know blowing over and getting wrapped around a little reed or something like that and you tend to get a better hookup whether you land them or not I mean that's the game we play but you tend to get a little bit better hookup and the bait swims better and comes through the grass better so point your rod tip or point it just a little bit above where that bait's coming from kind of approach it like a buzz bait a little bit that's how i fish a buzz bait and uh yeah you'll have better success give it a try trust me little guy little male and that's what happens like you're gonna catch some bigs and some little rats just like that, but they're all fun. And when you catch the little one, see how he's peeing like that? That's how you know they're they're up there to spawn. So let me show you how to rig this thing up and I'm gonna show you a little tip. Let me grab my pliers. So I recommend if you can get away with it, a belly weighted hook like this is the best way to go. I'm gonna give you a couple warnings though. You're gonna burn through a lot more plastics, but if you're fishing more like scummy stuff and less harder grass, it works a lot better. You can use less baits if you do a classic Texas rig setup, offset shank hook, four aught through a six aught, seven aught, depending on the size of the bait that you're using. But ideally for the best action, and if you miss a fish, what I really like to do is like let them blow up on it and then let it just shimmy down and that belly weight makes the bait shimmy down. So it's a trade-off, dude. You end up using a lot more baits, but I think you get more bites with a belly style screw-in weight, like or screw-in hook like that. 
One thing that I will do though, is the screw locks on here, especially if you're not using like the ones that are the center point from owner, um, they have kind of like a little gap in there. I'll just take my pliers and give it a little bit of a crimp, just like that, just to kind of squeeze it on there so that that screw lock doesn't fall off. And then all you're gonna do, this is a big easy, I'm gonna show you some baits in a little bit that I'll use, but you take that screw lock, you put it right in the tip, and you screw that jerker in just like that so you got it all centered on there and then you line up the hook and just thread it right in the body a lot of guys will skin hook it if you're fishing thin, thinner cover you can do that i'm in some super duper thick stuff so i just embed it on in there and then i'm going to tie that i got a halo this is in let's see here an xd or this is i think this yeah this is the ks2 elite um it's a seven or 7.2 heavy. I like a little shorter rod so I can make accurate casts. 50 pound braid, Shimano SLX. I wouldn't go up to 65 unless you're in the thickest stuff ever. 50 gives castability and it's just, it, you can work the bait a little bit better but it still floats the bait up. Definitely don't use mono. You're getting a little rain here. This might get awesome. But definitely don't use mono or fluorocarbon. If you start getting bites doing something like this, especially in Florida, if you're fishing kind of like a flat of like grass or cover, hang around because what you'll find is these fish are in sections they move up in like little waves or little pods to spawn or to stage you know sometimes you might not be fishing spawning fish you're fishing staging fish really cool thing too to do during like when the, the brim or the bluegill are spawning um it's, it's a great way to cover water and you get into a little pot of them you stop and you just rail them for all they're worth now today is a little bit cloudy there's two conditions i like for this it's drizzling a bit i don't like that I like either cloudy and overcast, kind of maybe like frontal weather or something, or high sun and maybe a little bit of chop, but pretty flat. Um, the reason I don't like the rain is it breaks up the surface a little too much and that bait, they, they tend to miss it or they don't want to commit to something on top because there's all, I think it's because there's all this like rain interaction occurring and like it spooks them a little bit. Um, offshore or a little bit deeper water, it's fine, but we're in 1.6 feet of water right there. We are in like no water. so. I don't like the rain. If you do get the rain, try to focus on something that bubbles a little more. Right now we're throwing a big easy, um, has a lot of bubble to it, but these fish are also aggressive and we're trying to weed through, there's a lot of males here, so there's a lot of smaller fish, so we're trying to weed through those and really perturb, that's our big word for the day, perturb the, um, the bigger fish that are like either right next to the bed or on their bed and they see this big swim bait looking thing and they're like, no, no, you're not coming over here colors colors of baits we'll go through baits in a minute i keep telling you we'll go through baits but right now i'm throwing this is lane toad it's a lane toad big easy it's kind of a watermelon with a bunch of fleck in it you need to see i just throw that down it was used you burn, you're gonna burn through a lot of baits you need to adjust your water clarity the reason i'm using that clear one is i want it somewhat transparent because i i don't want them to see it a bunch i want them to see a silhouette kind of like what ryan was talking about with the jerk bait i want them to see the silhouette and hit the silhouette like get angry at that big shadow that's right there if i was fishing in, say more tannic water or more stained water i might use like a black and blue um, maybe like a green pumpkin black and blue something a little darker or something super bright like super bright so it shows up and, and they can see it. So you gotta kind of play with your colors a little bit. In the end though, some of you guys are really into colors. I'm not a big color guy. I think it's all about cadence and retrieve. Finding like that speed, whether it's a start stop, or whether it's burning it or whether it's slow rolling it, figuring out that speed and kind of the bubble you want. That big easy has a blub, blub, blub. Um, another good one is a burner worm that has a little more of just kind of a kick with a softer bubble. Um, I'm not a big frog fan. I guess we're gonna talk about bait. So I'm not a big frog fan. The best bait to do this, 100%. And I am biased, but you can call me out on it. It's either a big easy or an easy swimmer, which is the one size down from this. It's castable with almost no weight. It gets a really good bubble. And it's also, it's a straight presentation. So it's, it's thin. It comes through, especially if you're fishing this thicker grass like this, this is what we'd call like, like a hayfield style kind of grass super thick if you tried to throw say like a, a frog through this or some wider gated top water um soft like soft plastic it'll get hung up you won't ride through it and the whole key is this is a reaction bite for the most part like you can catch them stopping it and maybe twitching it for a second but they're reacting to that bait moving so you want to make sure that bait is it doesn't have to have a fluid straight movement but it needs to move like it needs to kind of be like hey i'm here i'm here eat me and then get by 
and those straighter bait presentations easy swimmer I like if there's one to grab i'll put links to all this stuff down in tackle warehouse too in the description box but if there's one bait it's an easy swimmer it's it's a little bit smaller a little bit more compact you can put it on that belly weight hook and they chaw it this is so much fun all right back to fishing Just a little guy, but boy, did he crunch it. Was that not fun? That was fun. I can't tell you how many bites I got. Like the the GoPro is super fish eyed, so like it, it spans out a lot. I can't tell you how many bites I missed. Like it's almost intimidating how many bites you get when when you're on them when they're they're stacked up coming in. It can get in your head a little bit, but as long as you keep your head straight, there's some that are gonna close the deal, and it is such an active way to fish. It's it's a fun, I don't know, anything top water's fun, dude. Just kinda pay attention, you know, be patient, be calm, and you gotta kinda keep your head on your shoulders, but it's a cool thing to try. You might have to adapt it. Bog is freaking out. Are you, it's a, it's a coot, dude. It's not even a real duck. Bog is freaking out. He wants to make friends with the ducks. Bog likes making friends with animals, horses, cows. He's quite the sociable bog. But adapt it to where you fish. You know, if you got wood, if you got grass is ideal for this, but wood, shallow cover. I guess the real trick here is, is shallow. This is definitely a shallow approach for fish that are staging, maybe pre-spawn that are cruising the shallows and that. Um, and then if they get on beds, it's a killer way to fish. You cover a bunch of water. We really didn't do it today, but what I do sometimes is I'll fire back. This is 40 pound braid with a, a fat A stick bait and a quarter ounce little weight on it. What I'll do sometimes, if I think a fish is really locked in, that's an example here. So you got a hole right there. So if a fish blows up out of that hole on the easy or like a burner worm or whatever plastic I'm buzzing over the top, I'll follow it up. If I can't get them to blow up again, I'll go slang that worm out there. The only trick with that is oftentimes you're going to do it on a little softer rod. It's, it's tough to land them. That's really across the board. It's hard to land these fish. You get a lot of blow ups, you get a lot of action, but closing the deal is one of the biggest challenges. Like you talk to guys who fish like Okeechobee and back when there was the hay fields, they'd be like, dude, I had 35 pounds of fish on and and you believe them and it's like they come in with 15 pounds it's it's very tough to land them you got to play with your equipment i use that this is the ks272 heavy if your stuff is super thick go up to like a flipping stick like a seven six um a 50 pound braid i think covers you across the board seven two one reel a little faster reel not super fast but faster because you're buzzing it across the top but try it try it it's fun now you know downsize the swim bait downside your plastic if you need to but it's definitely cool. Bog, did you enjoy all the action? You enjoyed the ducks, the action. There are a lot of fish, a lot of blow ups too. You were very interested. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun shooting this video. I, I don't really do very well fishing sh like super shallow, like dirt shallow like we are. But this is one technique that I really, really enjoy because it is so intense. It's so active. You see the fish darting around, but give it a try on your lake. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, well, if you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Like I, I encourage criticism, unlike a lot of people. But if you did enjoy it, like hit that like button and subscribe. Support fishing content and stuff that you watch that, that you think has value. It's up to you to decide what kind of gets ahead in the algorithm, what kind of stuff shows up, and that's on you. So if you liked it, like it. But we will see you next time back out on the water. I hope we can do some more of this before we leave Florida because it is a fun bite. Thank you guys for watching and tight line until next time.